Quicksilver? What? How is that possible? This is a joke? What, what the hell is wrong with today? Quicksilver looks at me and is extremely confused on seeing me tweak out. Are you okay? He asks. No, of course I'm not okay. All of my friends and my girlfriend were just brutally killed by Ultron, and for some reason now I'm talking to him? How did I get here? Quicksilver says that he just saw me appear out of nowhere at super speed and didn't think anybody else could move as fast as him. He's pretty happy to finally talk to somebody fast like him, but he was hoping I'd be less of a psycho. I try to cool my head and ask him what year is it and what he's doing here. He laughs and tells me that it's 1983. 1983? Oh my god, you're actually kidding me right now. I somehow managed to both run into another universe and back in time all at once. Now I'm in the X-Men universe? This is unreal. I managed to cross the multiverse. It makes sense how the multiverse is a thing now since there isn't a TVA anymore thanks to Rush Hour. Rush Hour. This whole mess is his fault. And he's still out there with Ultron, probably gonna kill the rest of humanity. As cool as it is to meet my hero, I can't stay here. I need to get back into the MCU. Though, right as I go to ask for help, I get hit with another realization. I ask Quicksilver if he's gonna go meet with Professor X right now, and he says, yeah, his mom told him it'd be for the best. My face turns white, and I'm not gonna let any more people die today. I tell him to quickly follow me there, and I speed off. Once I arrive at the mansion, I immediately head to the basement and see Havoc shoot out a generator to blow the mansion up. Quicksilver runs up next to me and says that doesn't look good, and that we should probably get these guys out of here. I look over to him and smile. Of course, I say, and we both rush off to get everyone out of the mansion. I'm in the sweet dream scene, oh my god. We run all around making sure to get absolutely everybody out, and thankfully one of the first people I grabbed was Havoc, so he actually gets to survive this time. Once we both get everybody, I yell out and collapse to the ground. Quicksilver asks me if I'm alright, and I say that I may have overdid a little. I did just cross universes, so maybe participating in a mansion sweet dreams rescue was a little too much. Plus, my electricity is all out of whack right now, probably because I'm in another dimension with different rules. Now I know how Electro felt in No Way Home. It's cool to look up and see Beast and Mystique. I actually did show up in the X-Men universe. I couldn't have come at a worse time, since this is when Apocalypse is messing with everything. But I'm here, so I have to do something. If I could stand up now, then maybe I'd be able to help and save more people. Though, Stryker's helicopter comes down, and I know what happens next. So, I try to shoot it down with my electricity, but I'm too low on power right now when nothing comes out. I tell Quicksilver to quickly get everybody out of here, but it's too late and the shockwaves come out to knock us all unconscious. Eventually, when I wake up, I'm in a cell with Quicksilver, Beast, Havoc, Mystique, and Moira McTaggart. I guess I needed that rest since I'm feeling a little better now, and may be able to move fast again. Stryker comes out to ask us where Professor X is, and I laugh, telling him he got abducted by the most powerful mutant in the world, so I doubt he's gonna find him. The others all look at me and wonder how I know that. Stryker asks who I am, and I say that I'm just a tourist, and he should probably get out of here before he gets cut up or anything. Stryker growls and backs off, as Beast asks me who I am and how I know what happened to the Professor. I ask Beast if he remembers Logan, and that I'm sorta like him. Beast is surprised and asks if I've come from the future. I reveal that, yeah, kinda. I'm from the year 2015, and I accidentally ran so fast that I came all the way back here. Marra is pretty shocked to hear that I'm from the future, but Quicksilver and Mystique also remember Logan, so no, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I tell them that the guy who took the professor is named Apocalypse, and he needs to be stopped or else the whole world is doomed. I need to get to the professor myself, as with this help, maybe I can find a way back to the MCU universe, and maybe even further back, so I can save... So I can save everyone. Quicksilver is pretty happy to hear that there's somebody like me who can run so fast I can just zoom back in time, and that would be awesome to race somebody like that. I tell him maybe as soon as we get rid of Apocalypse and get out of here, then we can race. We begin to hear the Professor's voice in our head, and I know this is just Apocalypse forcing him to get the world to fear him, but with me here, hopefully we can get rid of him a lot earlier and get all of the mutants on our side. After the message, Havoc says that they made a big mistake taking him here, and he blasts open a door to get us out. Right as the doors open, the alarms begin to go off, though they're not for us. The intercom begins to shout out that Weapon X is loose, and that's a pretty good thing to hear, as maybe I can help us have an easier time by recruiting this Weapon X. 
I tell the others to go down the hall to find a jet, and tell Quicksilver to take Beast and follow me. The two of us zoom off, and Beast almost falls over after being dragged like that again, but regains his footing as he sees who's standing in front of us, and he asks, Logan? Wolverine turns to look at him, and is confused at seeing this weird monster in front of him, but for some reason, it looks really familiar. Quicksilver recognizes him too, and tells him that it's good to see him again. Logan asks how these two know him, and Beast looks to me all confused. I tell him that his consciousness was in his younger body, remember? So, he doesn't remember saving the future with all them all that time ago. I tell Logan that he may not know me, but we know who he really is, and that we can help him get better after the whole procedure he just went through. He just needs to come with us, and he'll be safe. Logan is pretty alone and confused right now over the whole adamantium being put inside of him thing, so he decides to just come along and get the answers with us. Once back at the jet, we all recoup and decide to suit up and figure out what to do next. I apologize to Logan that he did just get freed, but we're gonna need to fight a god right now, and after we're done there, then we can get him some help. Poor guy is used to fighting all these wars and says he'll join up, but we better help him out afterwards. On the way, the others are pretty scared of the upcoming battle after I described that it would be a god, but I tell them that in the future, they all become great heroes, so not to fear. In the future, I'm an Avenger, and I've been in my fair share of battles that were actually not too different from this one. And these guys have fought a force a lot worse than this in the future, and lived to tell it there, so they're gonna live to tell it now, especially with my help. Once we land, it's time to go and stop Apocalypse. First, we're really gonna need some help early, so I need to go to Quicksilver and Mystique to try and get an ally. We all run up to where Magneto is, and while trying to convince him, I tell Quicksilver that he has just lost his family. His wife and daughter were killed, so this is why he's with Apocalypse. If he knows that he's his son, it will help him greatly and get him on our side. Quicksilver knows I haven't steered him wrong yet, and he decides to reveal to Magneto that he is his son. Magneto instantly stops flowing the metal around, and the field around us dissipates. He turns to Quicksilver and says he's lying. Quicksilver says he's not, and tells Magneto his mother's name and if he remembers her. Magneto does remember, and can't believe it. He has a son. He floats down to Quicksilver and looks at him. He remembers him from his prison break, and that he said his mom used to know a guy who could control metal. Why didn't he put two and two together then? Since Magneto is so emotional right now, he hugs him to his surprise. Quicksilver hugs him back, and I smile, as I'm glad this time Magneto can finally get a happy ending. I slip away to help the others and come across Storm, an Archangel attempting to kill Jean, Scott, Havoc, and Beast. Storm summons her lightning and shoots it out at them, and I run in front of it, absorbing it all inside myself. Storm wonders how that's possible, and I transform to shoot it all right back at her. Storm gets blown back as I rush up to her and tell her to stop this. I know that man saved her life, but with us, she has a better chance to be a hero. Be a part of the X-Men, with us, with Mystique. At the mention of Mystique's name, I point over to where she is, and she sees her with Magneto, who is now also on our side. Storm asks me if I can really help her, which I tell her, of course I can, and offer her my hand. Storm takes it, and I tell her to help when she can, since we need to save the Professor. I speed off, and with an airbending slice, I can knock Archangel out of the air, and with him distracted, Cyclops and Havoc can blast at him to bring him down. With him down for good, I look to see Wolverine fighting with Psylocke, and the two are going at it pretty hard. Though of course in the end, I know Wolverine is going to be fine, so we need to get the Professor. Luckily, Nightcrawler managed to find him, and he teleports all of us away from the battlefield. Though, I let them know we can't take off just yet, and we need to take out Apocalypse now. Quicksilver says he'll come with me, and Magneto will join too, as he's not going to let another child of his die. Quicksilver and I rush up to Apocalypse and blow him back, and I tell him to watch his feet, as this guy can adapt quickly and may stop us from getting near him. We each run around and try to strike blows on him, and once I see him trying to trap our feet, I blast it off both of my electricity and rush back in. Magneto then throws a metal beam right through Apocalypse's chest to stun him in place when he's not expecting it, and Storm and I blast at him with our lightning to hold him in place. Apocalypse yells out as he tries to blow us away with his power. With his force, we all get blown back, but Wolverine comes up from behind and sticks his claws right through his neck. Apocalypse spurts blood, with Cyclops and Havoc firing at him to keep him in place. Once Jean has helped the Professor break free of the connection, she shows up as well to access her connection to the Phoenix Force, and uses its power to completely disintegrate Apocalypse, and ending the threat. 
all of us collapse to the ground exhausted. And I just wish it could be that easy for other villains. It's a lot better we don't have to have another speedster chasing after you and ruining everything. Hey everybody, sorry to interrupt the video, but it's sponsorship time. This video is sponsored by Fandom Ion, who sells some really great anime and manga merch, and a bunch of other cool merch with some pretty cool prices, such as Marvel merch as well for all you Marvel nerds like me. If you want to get these fine items for an even lower price, then make sure you click the link in the description down below and put in the discount code DAMON for not 5% off, but 10% off of your order. Again, that's code DAMON for 10% off of your order. Hopefully, you won't regret your purchases. Now, let's get back into the video. With Apocalypse defeated and Professor X saved, we all return to the Xavier Mansion, with Jean and Magneto helping to put it back together. With everything situated, it's finally time for me to meet with the Professor. Professor X says it's a pleasure to meet me, and he's happy that I helped motivate the new X-Men team to rise up. I tell him it's no problem, and that I really need his help in getting back to my home and that once he fully reads my mind, to try and not freak out. Professor X is kinda weirded out by me saying that, and puts his fingers on my head to see what's in there. After a few minutes of searching through, he screams out and backs away from me, sweating and looking very sick. He asks me how this is possible, that they are all fictional comic book and movie characters where I come from, how they are played by real actors, how I know of their entire future, how I'm from technical two different universes. It's unreal. How can this be? I apologize for making him go through all that, but that in this reality, everything is real. They may be fictional where I come from, but right now, they're in a reality that's in a vast multiverse out there. They really are real. Professor X needs a minute to cool his head, and after throwing up in his trash can, he begins to gain his senses. And while this is a lot to take in, he now has a clear visual picture of their future. And that even though it's a movie where I am, it's so odd how all of this is happening. I explained that, yeah, I normally don't tell anybody since they would never believe me and would hate the idea. Heck, maybe all of reality is a movie to everybody. Somebody could very well be watching everything we're saying and doing right now. The professor agrees and says that he's deeply sorry for what I've had to go through in my time in both dimensions. He says that after scanning my memory, I seem to have pushed past my own limits and transcended multiverses. He doubts I'll be able to generate that kind of speed again if I'm alone. If I really need to get back to the previous universe, I need to run as fast as I can with Quicksilver, as he's the only other person who can match my speed and get me home. That makes a lot of sense, and I just ask him if he thinks I'll be able to go back and change what happened. He thinks for a moment, and says that if what he saw in my mind is true, their own future changed drastically from what was supposed to happen. So, he has no doubts that we'll be able to do the same. I stick around for a while longer and watch as a new X-Men team has been officially formed, with the new X-Men being Mystique, Beast, Havoc, Quicksilver, Cyclops, Jean, Nightcrawler, and Wolverine with them being overlooked by both Professor X and Magneto. Magneto isn't going to go off on his own this time, as he doesn't want to leave his son, and even though he has extreme hate for humans, he hopes that this new X-Men team will be able to bring the mutant hate down into the world, and he can be free. Once they are all formed, their first mission is basically Operation Get Damon Home. I asked Quicksilver if he's ready for this, as we need to make sure we give it our all in breaking the multiversal barrier. He says he's got this, he made sure to have a big breakfast. I turn to the rest of the X-Men and thank them for helping me here, and I hope to see them again someday. Quicksilver and I run off as fast as we can, pushing ourselves to the limit. We run around the world countless times trying to generate enough energy to get me back. Nothing is happening yet though, which is worrying me greatly. Will I ever be able to make it back? Is everyone gonna stay dead? Is Karis going to stay dead? No, I won't let that happen. I let the anger flood back through me, and the professor gets into my head saying he's going to help as well. He unlocks all of the rage to the forefront, and I scream out running faster and faster. Quicksilver and I begin to see a portal forming in front of us, and I burst through it into the multiverse. I run through countless realities searching for the one I came from, and I look above me to see the Watcher, the Watcher who brought me here in the first place. He extends out his hand and has the correct universe open in front of me. I barrel through and crash into the ground. I groan at the impact and weakly stand up, hearing moaning and groaning from behind me too. I turn quickly to see that Quicksilver is still behind me. I ask him what he's doing here, as he was supposed to stop once the portal opens so we could stay in his universe. He says, it's not as easy as it sounds when you're running faster than you ever have in your life. 
He wanted to stop, but he was already through the portal, so I figured that if he stopped, he'd be lost in the multiverse. It would be better to stick with me and try and find an easier way home. I help him up and say I am happy he's here though, as I could use a good 2 on 2 fight to even the odds. Quicksilver's eyes then widen and he tells me to move. He zooms over and punches Rush Hour straight to the ground. Rush Hour didn't expect that and backs up laughing. I glare at him with rage I've never felt before in my life. He looks at me and says it's cute that I ran away and got back up. He honestly expected me to run back in time, which he was really worried about, but no, I was gone for just two seconds to get another speedster. Doubt that'll bring back my girlfriend. I stop. No, the Watcher brought me back to the moment I left. I failed to go back in time to save everybody. Ultron and the other Ultron bots show up too, informed of where I landed. Quicksilver looks around and worry and asks what we should do now. I look down and give him a straight answer. We're gonna die. No, not yet. With Quicksilver here, I may actually have a fighting chance. It may be a long shot, but I think I have another plan how to bring everybody back. I tell Quicksilver to get ready, and we both rush at Rush Hour and Ultron.